Um, I don't care how long you've been trading. You're going you're gonna to have a mental day that is just not there, okay? And the key is not to Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, where do we even begin, right? If you thought uh, 2002, uh, 2002, 2020 uh, was crazy, uh, the start of 2021 is really kind of upping the ante. And um, the big story overnight was obviously the runoff in Georgia. We talked about that. Nobody knew what, you know, what the election results were going to be. Uh, when everything was said and done, it looks like uh, the Democrats have secured uh, the two seats. But that's not even where we even begin, okay? Um, there was so many things going on, and, and I felt like today was one of those days that you could have easily burnt off all your mental equity within the first three, four hours of the day. And by the time the afternoon got, you were just a vegetable, an absolutely com complete vegetable. There, there's times that I have, you know, really aggressive losing days. I come out of it and just saying, all right, you know what? It was an aggressive day. I lost some money. But you know what? It's part of the business. Let me, let me move aside. And there's other days that you're trying to wrap around your head of what actually is going on. And it's more tiring than anything else. And again, th this business is so mental that it's so important to kind of stay sharp, not kind of stay sharp, just really, really be sharp. And when you look at today's events, this was really one of those days that it grinded you down mentally. And if you weren't careful, I mean, really, really careful and watching exactly what was going on, you're going to have a really, really hard time kind of maneuvering around today, especially in the afternoon. You know, again, we had the runoff. You had the market open up this morning. The Dow was up five, 600 points. The NASDAQ was down 200 points. You had all the Democratic friendly names uh, running this morning. You had the pot stocks running. You had the EV stocks running. Uh, you had the solar names running. Everything was all good, right? And then next thing you know, and, and we talked about this. We talked about this at Morning Strategy. The last thing we wanted to do is start shorting stocks in the hold. This, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, even for you know, even for a year, any time, especially in a good market, any time you get a an aggressive gap down in anything, the value is always to the upside. And in, in, in a bearish scenario, if you ever get a gap up, the value is always to the downside. So the last thing we wanted to do, especially. Uh, with the overall general market being so strong, taking out of the equation how uh, crappy a lot of these beta names were acting. And again, if you watched last night's video, we, we talked about this. You know, the majority of these beta names were under supply, right? We talked about this. The Amazons of the world, the Netflix of the world, Facebook, so forth and so on. And we'll get to the video in a second. This is how crazy this market is. But the most important part was I didn't expect a lot from beta today to begin with, but I knew for a fact I didn't want to short them into the hole because, again, until the NASDAQ 100 starts breaking down levels, and we talked about this this level last night at 305, the last thing you want to do is start preempting a trade. Again, we don't anticipate trades. The same thing on the flip side of what we talked about last night in the video. As much as I loved the video yesterday, the last thing I wanted to do is preempt the trade, guess where it was going to go next, thank God, because you should see what it did uh, towards the end of the day. But again, you had so much to digest this morning. You had uh, the runoffs, right? The, the, the Georgia runoffs. And then next thing you know, in the afternoon, you started seeing some crazy news come out. Uh, Alibaba, uh, the whole China fiasco. The U.S. Is, is considering banning shares of trading in Alibaba. Alibaba gets, I mean, absolutely destroyed. I mean, just, just absolutely destroyed. Uh, literally on one candle. If you saw this candle, this was real. This was all one candle just getting absolutely destroyed. And then just when you think things couldn't get crazier, right? The market started coming in a little bit. You started hearing, you know, you started hearing buzzing that there were Trump protesters, okay, storming uh, the nation's capital, for God's sake, getting into the nation's capital, getting into uh, all these different aspects where the government uh, is conducting their day-to-day -day businesses. And you start saying to yourself, no, this can't be real. Because again, logically, if you hear something like that happening, you're expecting, you know, Secret Service, FBI, 
goddamn, did the, the army would come out and start shooting. So he didn't, didn't even think it was real. But this was real. And you started seeing video come out of it, complete turmoil. And when you didn't think that was even crazy enough, Trump goes on on Twitter, on Twitter of all things, and does the ultimate, the absolute ultimate. He snitches, he snitches on Pence. And I quote right from his Twitter feed. Pence did not have the courage to do what should have been done to protect the country and the Constitution. My mind is blown. My mind is absolutely blown that this was all going on today. And oh, by the way, we had to trade the market today. So absolutely one of the craziest uh, driven sessions, news headline driven sessions that I could probably remember. Jesus, and, and, and it, think about it, we just went through 2020. And this blew me away today, just absolutely blew me away today. Uh, the amount of information that was thrown at us, just absolutely insane. Oh, by the way, and there was FOMC minutes. Who even remembers what the FOMC was even talking about? But if you, if you really take all the information, and this is why we always talk about, you have to bring your A mental game every single day. Today, I, I came out of today mentally like I lost 10,000 brain cells, like I really did. I, by, by four o'clock, I couldn't even even form a sentence. Like I was talking to my daughter. She was just, I don't even know what we talked about. And all I kept on remembering was just nodding my head and just winking. Just like the, 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 the words wouldn't come out of my mouth. But this is why it's so important, guys. Your mental health is so damn important to kind of maintain from day to day. And if you look at today's session, I couldn't get anything going. I really couldn't get anything going today. Um, I had some nicky knack losses. I had some Nicky Nack gains. I completely botched one of the best pivots of Roku uh, for the week. And again, I did, I did well with NVIDIA the last couple of days. And we'll get to NVIDIA in a second. But this was just such a frustrating day for me all the way around. And the one thing I, I figured out a long time ago, when the market's giving you bad hands and you're playing those bad hands and you just can't get going, the best thing to do is kind of leave it alone because if you continue to push and if you continue to kind of squeeze the water out of a rock, you're going to wind up, instead of a ticky-tack kind of a paper cut day, you're going to wind up mentally destroyed and you're going to start revenge trading, doing all these creative things that you take, you take one little you know, day and turn it into like a severed head. So the last thing you want to do because of the mental side, when you see your you know, your market or your uh, process kind of stalling out just because of maybe liquidity or a new cycle, whatever the case may be, the best advice is just kind of get out of the way. I really just got out of the way and it, it hurts because I really messed up a really big Roku pivot. Uh, it only went up, you know, $12. I wound up making a cup of coffee on it just because I was a little bit more conservative this morning. Um, which I don't, you know, I'm trying to play back the trade in my head over and over again. But the moral of the story is just, just wasn't, just today just wasn't my day. Nothing to do with monetary. Just one of those days that you just can't get going. It was very, very frustrating. Uh, all this new cycle got thrown at me at one time. So it was like a double dose of like everything, including the kitchen sink being thrown at you. And again, the best thing to do is kind of recharge, right? Gather your head, gather your, you know, your, your, your thoughts, get your game plan for the next day and kind of push it forward. Because again, if you continue to push in a market that's just not complementing what you're thinking, you're out of business. I mean, you're out of business very, very quickly, both mentally and eventually financially. And, and here's the most ironic part. If all that wasn't enough, I loved the video, right? And I, and I talked about it last night. You know, I talked about it last night on the video and I said, look, man, look how, forget about today. Look, look how good it's setting up here. It's two days over the 50 day moving average. There's some great option flow, but the key, again, the key what we talk about all the time, as much as we love the setup, and I talked about this very, very specifically last night in the video, as much as we love the setup, okay, we don't jump, you know, we don't jump in until it confirms. I thought it was gonna go higher. It looked like it was going to go higher, but until it confirmed this top of the range, you have no trade. You just have a trade setup. And unfortunately, you see a lot of new traders, you know, they look at a stock and they go, wow, this looks great. I'm going to buy it. It's not confirming yet. It's not at the sweet spot yet, but I think it's going on. Guys, don't think. Okay, don't think. The, the worst thing you could do is think and wish and want and try to mentally will the stock to go where you, where you want to go. And the most ironic part, and maybe this will be kind of like, you know, the main course, if 2020 was the appetizer, 2021 is starting out as one flew over the cuckoo's nest, like, like, like beyond craziness, maybe this is the main course. 
In 24 hours, and you don't, you, you rarely see this, but in 24 hours, NVIDIA went from literally a long setup, right? One or two days away from a long setup, and look at it now. Isn't that amazing? Like, look at this thing now. This thing is, is looks like it wants to challenge the October 30 lows. So just an absolute crazy day. I mean, I, I think that's the best way of saying it. Just absolute crazy day. Uh, I'm not a drinker. I had a, I had a, couple, of sh uh, I had a couple of shots um, on New Year's Eve. I drank a little champagne. I had a little bit of scotch. But, man, this is a market that we're really, really, you know, this is a great, great time to start that drinking habit you always wanted. Uh, so absolutely crazy day. Uh, if you look at the pivots today, uh, if you look at the pivots today, they were aggressive. They, they really were. But at some point, right, at some point when you get, like for me, for example, I kind of just got out of the way. Um, at some point, you just got to get out of the way because, again, your mental health is more important. And no matter what would happen today, there was just no point for me to continue to push. Uh, I just wanted to kind of leave the day and kind of regroup. So there were some really good moves. The problem is a lot of the moves were very, very thin. Like, again, this looks great on paper, right? It looks absolutely great on paper. Uh, Baidu, uh, 212 of bills below can flush. No, it held there three times. We talked about Baidu yesterday on the video. There is no way... There's absolutely no way you, you, you could have gotten Baidu short off, not with any type of size. Uh, Baidu, here was the 212, right? Here's the 212 we talked about last night. It was a dollar spread at the open, 100 share lots, and it literally went from 212 to 204, 207, right? 207, like it felt like it got there like on 1,000 shares. There was just no liquidity at all. So again, it looks great on paper, right? Well, I called it. Nobody gives a shit about calling anything, okay? If you're not in the trade, you're not in the trade. So this, unfortunately, again, another another example of how frustrating today was. Uh, you couldn't get it off. And next thing you know, yada, 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 perfect move to 204. But it looks great on paper, right? It is what it is. Um, then you have then you have uh, Beyond. Beyond gets downgraded today, uh, 121.50, 121. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, again, congratulations for you guys who did catch this pivot. Again, I just got out of the way. Again, it, it just wasn't my day. And I just wasn't, wasn't pushing. So here's the 121.50. Uh, went all the way down to 117. If you caught it, great job. If you didn't, it is what it is. Uh, nice move on Neo. 5450 needs to build. Here is Neo. Uh, right from the word go, again, a lot of these uh, EV names sparking because of uh, the Democratic, at least initial win. Uh, big move here at 5450. Got into the, the 5450 area, and then everything obviously turned around on that uh, on that anarchy. Uh, crazy move there as well. Uh, Square, you know, nice pop on Square. Uh, upgraded this morning, uh, 23050 to uh, 23050 needs to build. Here was Square, right? Here was Square. Uh, took out the 23050, went to like 23350. Nice little move there uh, on Square. Uh, skills was a nice little move. Uh, 2390, 24 needs to build. Again, uh, the SPAC names, uh, the ARC. You know, the arc trade. So it took out the 24, uh, went all the way to 24.70. Not a big move at all, but again, uh, it is what it is there. VERU just never gave a second entry. I still like it. I think closer to 10, uh, this thing can wake up. So let's keep an eye on that. BBI never got there. Uh, take on the way up. Uh, GEOV, again, just a, just a nonsense trade for me. I bought it today. Uh, I didn't wait for the second entry. I wound up losing a dime. Nothing, you know, nothing here. This is the trade that I completely messed up. And, you know, I, I keep on replaying this trade in my head. Should I have waited for a bigger pullback before the second entry? It, it, again, you kind of go over these trades over and over again. Again, when, when they go, right, and you get you catch a pivot and it goes smoothly, like NVIDIA in the last few days has been really, really smooth. Two, three, four dollars. Everything was good to the upside. And when, when they stall out, you start saying to yourself, well, wait a minute. Well, who has control of this pivot, Right. So I get long Roku and it just, it went up like 50 cents and it just sat there and it just sat there and it just sat there. And I know for a fact, the longer stock sits there, there's a difference between building over a pivot, you know, 36, 37, 38, then just sitting there, the longer it sits there and it doesn't appreciate off, uh, off that natural pivot, the likely, and especially we saw today how weak the NASDAQ was, the likely this thing is going to get pulled. So I made the choice. I got out of it. I made a cup of coffee on the trade. And, and then I watched the stock go up literally $13 and, you know, it's disappointing. I, I can take, you know, I can take losing money. That's fine. Uh, losing day. That's fine. But again, and I, and I think I speak for a lot of traders who have been doing this for a very, very long time. I, I never get upset when I lose money or have a losing day. I get incredibly irritated at myself 
when I mismanage a trade or overthink a trade or uh, get a trade that looks really, really good and I, and I miss and I, I just mismanage it technically or, you know, or putting yourself in a situation that you know you're in the right trade, but you're kind of second guessing uh, now what's going on. And that's exactly what was going on today. It was a little bit, I was really, really disappointed in myself. Um, you know, I just watched it go up to, you know, $12, $13, which sucked. But again, it is what it is. Um, you know, like I always say, let your worst trade be a winning trade. But again, cup of coffee versus $13 is potato, potato, a big, big difference. Anyway, if you, if you, I know a lot of you guys did catch it. I'm very disappointed in myself. Uh, GP, uh, 32, uh, 50, 32, 75 needs to build. Here was GP. That second entry went all the way up to uh, 34 and a half. So nice, uh, nice push on GP if you caught that as well. Um, Square, we talked about that. Uh, and that's it. So, you know, yeah, the market is nuts. Uh, the market is nuts. Uh, we try to be perfect as traders. We try to be perfect as parents, as spouses, and, uh, and as parents, but the problem is we're not. We're human beings. Um, I don't care how long you've been trading. You're going you're gonna to have a mental day that is just not there, okay? And the key is not to dwell on it. The key is not to uh, take it with you for the next trading day. The key is to accept it for face value. It is what it is. You're going to have another day like this, but the most important part is get over it. It's over. Guys, God bless. Please stay safe. God bless America. I mean, what we saw today, the chaos, the, the you know, the, um, it's just absolutely anarchy. So guys, God bless everybody. Stay safe. And with God's help, we'll have a nice smooth session tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great night.